самые главные люди персонажи на дорогах и народ гоняет так давайте я буду делить экран сначала я беру свое видео если вы знаете дайте знать мне любопытно скорее всего именно так так я тебя убираю сюда и мне надо шерить экран Шер uh, контекст, да, share. то, что справа. То, что справа. Так, я надеюсь, что вы видите экран. Mm -hmm. Вот, а, uh, uh, good morning. Uh, let's, okay, okay, let's, let's proceed. Today's lecture three, uh, as I said multiple times, if you go to, um, if you go to uh, the shared Dropbox and then you click at, uh, at lectures, right, then you should see this lecture three PDF, so you can review it later on. And let's start off. And uh, speaking of, um, uh, if everything goes, goes fine then uh, I should be a, I sh I'm gonna I'm gonna visit uh, Novgorod in, in February for a week or two and, and gonna give a talk so you're welcome to come to the talk in, in February if you have a further questions and an in, in interest in, in the field we, we can talk all right so uh, that's how I create the lectures uh, I must say that uh, using iPad. iPad is great, however, uh, drawing on iPad, it's still a little bit awkward. Maybe it's awkward for me only. Uh, the size of the iPad, even though it looks like a real piece of paper, but still uh, my hand drawings are way too large than it should be. But if I make them smaller, I don't see well what's going on. So very likely uh, I should get an iPad Pro that is just a, a couple of inches uh, larger than this just regular iPad. So it's going to give you a look of a proper paper. But, it, but, the, but the cost is outrageous. It's $1,100, uh, which is way too much compared to this $300 or $400. OK, so um, that's where we stopped last time. Our, our, our model, again, I, I keep saying this over and over again, that uh, uh, I don't, you see, I don't show the equations, even though I, I showed you equations last time, I'm going to show them again, uh, because uh, it's just a, a mathematical convenience, sort of, not convenience, but kind of agreement on that. If you give a talk on mathematics related issues, then you better show at least some kind of equations like these, right? Even though, I mean, once you show and then you explain the concept, you no longer need the equations. I mean, we all understand that, uh, for example, the cubic parabola is going to give something like that, but it doesn't have to be cubic parabola. It can be, that, can be anything else, right? And whenever you see a fault like that, that fault could be due to x squared, or it should be x cubed, or it should be x to the fourth, it should be sine x, right? It can be anything else. Sine x. And the x cube is the same thing, right? We do know that if you uh, do the expansion of sine, you're going to get the cubic term over here. So, but my point is, uh, if you if you if you uh, ask yourself, right, that what I mentioned last time, uh, what kind of bifurcation? You do know that it's going to be under one of our bifurcation, and the reason you do know that because you see uh, the the intersection point is in the equilibrium state. Okay, you move it down to the stable branch and it becomes stable. You move it up like this and it becomes uh, unstable, meaning that it, it has two positive uh, characteristic exponents, right? And again, and then you, I mean, I don't know if you heard of what's called uh, Poincaré, Bendixon, Dulac theory on systems in plane, then, okay, Poincaré introduced what's called Poincaré index that tells you how many equilibrium states can be inside that closed orbit, right? And things like that. So, but bottom line is, uh, you cross this knee point, okay, you move it up, 
you're going to get a little canard over there. Basically, a canard is just a is just an arch of a spiral that converges to the equilibrium state, right? And then that arch or arc, if you want, right? It gets longer, right? Longer, longer, like this, right? And then comes back to the stable branch over and over again. So, but the question is whether it's a subcritical or supercritical. It's still, I mean, I don't, I want to say it's open question, right? Uh, there's a one particular textbook. Uh, that was co-authored by Ilya Shenka, okay, uh, very likely you have the name, Arnold, okay, another great mathematician, right, and uh, 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 Valer Afremovich, another great mathematician, Lenin Chulikov, who is a founder of dynamical system theory, right, one of the founders, right. Uh, then they uh, discuss uh, how you can detect the, the type of the bifurcation in a singular limit. It become clear, right? If you have equations like that, an epsilon and small, then contribution of the second equation is basically minimal. So then it's kind of clear that the properties of the fast equation should determine whether the bifurcation is supercritical or sub. And the answer is the following, right? Let me just reiterate it. As you can see, okay, at this point, the derivative, okay, derivative. Of the right-hand side of the first equation is zero, right? Which is a which is a fault point, right? Or cell node bifurcation. Okay, clear. Then, as you can see, it's kind of concave uh, rightwards, so it, it doesn't do it like that, right? So, which means the second derivative is always positive, right? So then, I'm I'm just telling you the story, right? If you use a quadratic function here, then the bifurcation is going to be subcritical, right? If you use a cubic term, it can be super. Uh, and subcritical depends on the uh, you know, fine details of the tail expansion. So what is then what determines the type of the bifurcation? And the answer is that basically you have to expand the right hand side of the first equation in a in a tail series, right? And find the sign of the uh, of the cubic term. And if that sign is negative, then the bifurcation is going to be uh, supercritical. Otherwise, if the sign is positive, then the bifurcation is going to be subcritical. The problem is that the cubic term right here, it can be, a, it, it's so, I mean, it, if you add up just a little bit of epsilon over there, then overall expression may change the sign, which means the, the Lapinov coefficient, right, whose sign you're trying to determine is close to zero, which makes everything very, very delicate. Okay, so that, but it's still the bifurcation theory in action. OK, so the bottom line is that uh, as soon as you move it up, then you have what's called relaxation oscillations like that, right? OK, so again, in if if I do the bifurcation theory, right, and then I'm going to show you that that's basically my approach, then if I would like to consider the uh, evolution of transition from equilibrium state to periodic orbit like this, right, I would move this red line, which is the just uh, this fast loop line, Shift it up and down just to see the evolution. But if I'm in a neuroscience context, then I've mentioned multiple times the only parameter that I have in this case is just external current, or it can be synaptic current that that particular neuron receives from from other cells of the network, right? And every time I'm to keep telling you, okay, individual dynamics versus versus network dynamics, okay? And the idea is that if you happens to be over here, right? And then again, it's that's where the Hodgkin hacks, they are all uh, Fitzgerald and Aguma, all, all neurons, right? They're placed very close to the new point, meaning that it's kind of stable, right? It is stable, but little perturbations can shift, okay? Can make the system excitable, okay? When I say little, I mean little but finer perturbations. So you don't want to be far away in a very, very stable zone, right? You, you want to be on the edge because biological systems, uh, in 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 general, the interaction uh, between the biological system is not harsh, meaning that it's gentle, it's delicate. They don't fight for for they don't have a price to fight for, right? They 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 put on a network to negotiate uh, and produce the rhythmic outcome that neural circuit is supposed to do. Okay. And, and then again, it doesn't. It's, it, it's not supposed to be done again during this strong coupling. But the problem is that define what strong coupling is. Okay, but strong, strong coupling basically means that it, when you couple the network, right, then 
you no longer clo stay close to the periodic orbit that you see right now on the right hand side of, of this slide. OK, all right. So the 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 bottom line is that if you happens to be an initial state over here, right, then if you apply a positive current, basically the cubic nucleus is shifted to the right. OK, and then you transition from a steady state to oscillations, right? But if I shift it to the left, applying a negative pass like that, then typically what happens, and that's my, I mean, again, it's my mistake here, uh, then when you fastly or quickly remove the pulse, then you will transition from this state, OK, all the way up to and, and complete the cycle before you can do to the steady state of the unperturbed system. And this should be on the next slide over here, right? That's what I was trying to say, that if you apply a negative pulse in response, biological system can produce what's called a train of spikes. In in a, in, a, in a case of the Fitzgerald-Gorman system, uh, it's supposed to produce just a single spike and then converges to the steady state like this. So again, one more time, this is unperturbed system, okay? So you're sitting very close to the knee point, right, on the edge of the uh, of the instability over here, right? Then you apply a negative pulse, okay? The cubic nucleus, the yellow line, shifts is shifted to the left. So your equilibrium state transitions over here. So you're now here, and then you quickly remove the pulse, and instead of kind of bending towards the old equilibrium state, right, because it's low fast system, you catapult almost vertically up. OK, to converge to this upper branch and then you transition through this branch and lower branch to converge to the steady state. So that gives you what's called uh, posting heap to rebound. Uh, again, if you if you're going to ask me whether it's a that's what happens in a in the biological systems, the answer is that not. I mean, again, the picture, you should see something like that, right? OK, negative, negative pass quick response, right, and then transition to the steady state. That's true. That's what you see in biological system. Whether this mathematical picture truly describes the phenomena in some systems, yes, but only in in a very limited number of systems. OK, so that's what we talked about this too, right? And we need to discuss this as well. And it's a part of the uh, of the first project that I've assigned for you. OK, so in what if and we, we saw that the 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 slow nucleus is no longer just a straight line. I mean, again, typically, if you if you can see the Hodgkin Huston type of systems, there is no straight line, right? But it can be a symbolic curve that either, I mean, kind of curve, highly bended right, like this, right? Or it can be less bended, kind of straighten up. Then, unlike the previous case, when you still have the under of hot bifurcation at the transition, right? In the, in the second case, when it bends kind of very sharply over here, then you're going to get a tangency between this le left knee point on the cubic nucleus and the yellow curve, which corresponds to this lower nucleus. And therefore, this time, the cellular bifurcation is, is in charge of the transition from steady state to oscillations that you can see over here. OK, so I mentioned a couple of times last time that uh, uh, you can't really see the gap between the lines, cubic nucleus here and the cubic nucleus there. But nevertheless, if you integrate, if you solve differential equation, right, you shouldn't rely. I mean, again, on a on the eyeball test, right? But you have to run differential equations to see whether you get oscillations or not. And again, pro two 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 prominent sort of mathematicians in the field. One of them is John Rindel, John Rinzel who is a founding father of mathematical neuroscience as a field here in the United States. And he proposed several uh, phenological models. Uh, we're going to discuss them today, how I mean, how the geometry, this geometric approach shapes the neural dynamics. And then his former student, who is now uh, another famous uh, mathematician, Bart Ermentrout, uh, they brought a paper it, it was a chapter, it's not a uh, research article, but it's still a research paper, but it was published in a, in, a, in, a, in a book, in a collection of the papers, which are not considered as a peer-reviewed publication here in, in the States. Uh, and they talk about excitability one, excitability two types. So excitability one is basically a transition 
to oscillations through the cell node bifurcation, or excitability to through the unknown of bifurcation for us, for, for I mean, core mathematicians is kind of obvious, but again, they didn't target mathematicians, they target specifically uh, neuroscience folk or folks who kind of uh, enjoy mathematics, but up to certain limits, but they're more interested in modeling studies rather than uh, proving theories and, and so forth and so on. But it, it was very helpful. So plus it, this paper uh, introduced some kind of language and uh, or terminology that we, I mean it, it's it's helpful to use. For example, you say excitability one, and everybody knows in the room that we will talk about cell node bifurcation transition to oscillation through cell node. If I say excitability two, then uh, you you do know that transition uh, occurs. Uh, through the Andronofa bifurcation, but again, you know, typically nobody really cares whether it's a sub or supercritical, because as I said multiple times, that it's tra tra transition occurs so quickly, you don't really see, you know, th that unstable limit cycle or stable limit cycle. It becomes large amplitude limit cycles almost instantaneously. Okay, so, okay, so at this point, uh, models are great, individual models, but OK, let, let's discuss the uh, the small network as we did it before. OK, and you will see the difference between integrating fire concept, right, and how you create neural networks using a couple of physical models. OK, so uh, let me do this. And, then, and again, it's for me, myself, I, it was interesting transition to realize how I mean, how people introduce the concept of synaptic interaction. So uh, you have two cells, blue and red. The, the blue uh, cell is described by the blue equation over here. Okay, red is described by the same equation, right? So they're almost identical. They don't have to be identical, but I mean, for simplicity, they are, okay? And they share the same slow subsystem. That's why it's in the yellow, okay? In this picture, uh, the, the meaning of this yellow equation is just this simple straight line, which is the slow move line. Again, it's all about uh, the transition, again, interaction between the cubic move line and the yellow line, where the stable point is, uh, whether it's stable or unstable. And then you introduce coupling, okay? And let's consider the, the simplest coupling ever. It's going to be chemical. I mean, we're talking about chemical synapses, okay? So therefore, you're going to get a term in the first equation, G, maximal conductance. G, similar G in the second equation. Then you have what's called, again, some people call this coupling function, uh, a coupling function S, here S2, okay? And you see I put it in red, meaning that that function S in the first equation is a function of V2. So basically this is the only coupling term, because if I remove this, then the first equation is totally independent of the first one and vice versa, right? So the S function is a function of V2, and this function S2 is a function of V1 of this voltage right, instead, okay? And what, what's the, the meaning? This function S is coupling term, or again, uh, it's, it describes the uh, rate of probability of neurotransmitter, neurotransmitters release, and the idea is that whenever, that's an interesting feature of a chemical synapses, if, your cell, okay, red or blue, right, is placed, it, it, I mean, temporarily, it stays on a low branch or transition through the low branch, then there is no interaction between the cells, okay? In, again, in engineering, in, in other fields, such a coupling is called sometimes pulse coupling, which means unlike electrical gap junction, it doesn't, it doesn't work all the time, right? It only works when one of the cells or both cells are above snappy threshold, and in this case, it would be convenient just to put synaptic threshold right in the middle, so it's going to be a voltage, it's going to be zero, okay? So therefore, therefore, the synaptic, uh, that function, coupling function S, given by this exponential, right? So look at this. If I happens to be here, right, where voltage is roughly minus one, okay, I make this, uh, it's going to go and look like a Zora, mod Zora model, so this is basically a Z shape. So this is negative one. Therefore, I have, look at this, I have negative one, I plug negative one in here, synaptic threshold is zero, and then I have E 
to the 100. E to the 100, right? You, you do know that 2 to the 100 is 1024, right? E is a 2.7. This number is around, say, I don't know, 2000, maybe 200. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. Basically, that means the denominator is large, which means this function S is, is zero, right? So, but if you place, okay, whenever this red cell uh, catapults, right, and lands on, uh, on, the upper, on the upper branch where voltage is roughly around one, therefore you have e to the negative 10, which is close to zero, which means probability is close to one. Okay, so that's how, okay, probability is zero here, almost one over there. So it looks like a heaviside function, but again, it's kind of smooth adaptation of the heaviside function. So that term either exists or it doesn't exist, right? So it's a zero, one, basically. And then you have this V1 minus reversal potential. And again, I stress that the reversal potential here is its level determines whether uh, whether the interaction is chemical uh, uh, inhibitory or excitatory. So we're going to keep this minus over there minus. So and if I place the reversal potential say at, at the level of negative two, it doesn't really matter. All it, it has to be it has to be below the the low the low branch. Okay. Therefore, okay, it, what's going to happen is that it's going to slow down V prime on the, on the upstroke. Okay, which means this term. Okay, it overall is going to be negative, which means it's going to slow down V prime. Uh, otherwise, if if the reversal potential is around level two, that this term is going to be two, right? And therefore, this expression is going to be always positive, which means it's going to accelerate or speed up the V prime here. here. Okay, so, but here's the deal. Interesting enough, look at this. Now, let's say, let's just focus on a, uh, on a, on a cell number one, and suppose that cell number one gets uh, synaptic input from either excitatory or inhibitory, but basically S is one, okay, so you just have negative G V1 itself, okay, which is similar to that term, okay, and G is a coupling strength. So basically it slightly changes the linear term, which means overall uh, adding this term is going to slightly change the slope of the cubic nucleon at origin over here. It's called tilting, right? So it's going to slightly change the slope. Right? That's what I was trying to show. If the black line shows you unperturbed nucleon, then the this grayish curve tells you what uh, overall the input is. So basically, what it, what it's trying to do, this term it will try to uh, get rid of the hysteresis. Hysteresis is the overlap. So this is hysteresis, the distance between the left knee point and the right knee point. If you add up this term, it will try to uh, make it smaller because basically it, it subtracts it from you from one one minus g is going to decrease the slope okay it's simple as that so it's a little 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 tilt of the cubic nucleon which is basically almost irrelevant in the, in the given context okay but that's um, what matters so okay regardless of whether it's inhibition or excitation the overall action of this term is going to be the same because because it basically it doesn't it doesn't change uh, when you change the level, but the second term truly important. OK, and again, if you see this is G, S and E. G is fixed, S is zero, one. This term either present or it's not present, right? And when it's present, depending on the sign of this and value of this universal potential, if it's negative, it's going to shift this black cubic to the left. Otherwise, it's going to shift it if it's positive to the right. That's it. So basically, if you if you if you if you wonder what's the overall uh, role of the contribution of this term, it's due to the constant shift. Clearly, if you set up synaptic uh, level lower, right, the reversal potential, then overall this impact is going to be greater. But it can be compensated always by by varying the value of g. And, and of course S, right? So there are three terms involved, right? So if the neurotransmitter release rate is not zero, one, but kind of oscillates between uh, around zero, that that term is not, it's not huge, right? So the shift is not gonna be substantial. Okay, so, all right. Now let's consider one particular case, right? As simple as that. So for 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 time being, okay, so we have this, it's, you see, I, I, pick, I draw a picture. It looks like a really Z, Z, Z character, Z letter, 
right? And this is my synaptic threshold. And even this low and low line, which is given over here, right? Typically, it's a yellow line like that. I just make it flat, okay? So which means, but uh, whenever I shift either to the right or to the left, okay, if the yellow line is flat, then I won't gain. I'm not going to get any equilibrium state at all in the system, right? It's going to be. I'm in new new equilibrium state, or its stability is not going to change, right? It's going to be always like that, right? Whether you shift to the left or right. Okay, so what then the deal? How do they really operate, right? And this shifting no clients or shifting cubic is the most important. Okay, so let's consider the following case. So it's just an illustration. So you have two cells, right? And then you pick initial conditions, say this for the blue cell and that for the red cell. And these spheres, those are supposed to illustrate the transition in time. Okay, so during the same period of time, blue gets closer and closer to the knee point. No surprise, it's going to be forced to, to, to take off, right? Okay, and the red is still here, keep, keep moving, right? And clearly, if I introduce the difference between the cells, right? So yeah, it's going to be somewhat like that, right? Blue followed by red, no surprise. Okay, but what's going to happen is that if I have inhibition, whenever blue, as soon as blue, crosses this synaptic threshold and lands on the upper surface, the, the blue cell, right, it, it uh, sends a negative uh, current, negative means inhibitory current to the red cell, okay, and how it's going to look like in our case. So basically, if the this black line is a cubic node line, unperturbed cubic node line, when both cells are below synaptic threshold, then, okay, then Blue cell will still remain on that on that uh, unperturbed black line, cubic node line, whereas the corresponding node line for the red cell is shifted leftwards. Okay, which means red cell it 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 has to travel longer right, to the left, not to that knee point, but to the new knee, knee point, because the blue cell kind of uh, shifted the, the corresponding node line for the red cell, delaying its spike initiation. Okay. All right. Let's suppose, okay, so that, that, that means it's going to be a longer delay, so it doesn't jump immediately. It will have to travel all the way. But this is the second uh, act in, in, that, in, that, in that play is whenever it gets there, okay, and Blue cell, it also shifts the, the corresponding uh, node line for the blue shell, cell to the left, which means the blue cell doesn't have to travel all the way up to the old knee point, but the the, it, the knee point it gets closer to the current state of the blue cell, which means it's gonna uh, it's gonna throw itself from that uh, from that knee point down to the uh, off state, okay, and 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 together it's going to delay or increase the gap between both cells, right? And because because inhibition is reciprocal, then the same is true now for 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 the other for the other combination, right? So now red it's going to delay the mole client for the blue cell, which means it 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 delays the spike initiation in the cells, and that's what you're going to see if I pick them together like this. Right. If I pick them together like that, with every little, with every little, uh, I mean, it, de it depends on the, of course, it depends on the interaction. With every little uh, spike, you see the gap. You keep increasing, keep increasing, keep increasing, keep increasing, keep increasing until the cells will become. I mean, will go in anti phase. Right. I mean, they can't increase forever because again, the, this, the picture is symmetric, so which means. Uh, Okay, they're going to converge to 0.5. So the let me see in a in a I click on a finder. Okay, and then I go to M files, and then it's going to go now. And today I added up a, a new folder. It's called uh, it's called motifs motif motif uh, in Russian motif right motif. It's just a it's a it's a it's a uh, repeated 
uh, circuit for, for neural network. And then I open the file, it's called pair Fitzhugh-Nagumi in heap. Okay, it's, it says pair, yeah, release. Okay, and when I run this code, I'm going to see, okay, something like this. So as you can see, the cells start almost together. The phase difference between them is zero. And as time progresses, you see, as time progresses, or the number of seconds increases, then they're going to go in entire phase. If you can't see this well, you can always zoom this in. Uh, let me see. Oops, don't do this, please. Click plus. And as you can see, they're totally in entire phase. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slightly, okay, not slightly, uh, so in, increase the interaction between the cells, and I run them. And as you can see, the convergence, it's almost immediate, right? Before it took almost 10 iterates before the phase lag con converged to a value of 0.5. Now it, it's basically after two or three iterates, right? Cells become, uh, uh, totally a uh, uh, spike in the interface with respect to each other. So again, if I go back to the old values, that you see they're not symmetric, right? And I click run again. Then yeah, it took almost 15, 15 iterates, 15 cycles before they become uh, totally, totally uh, in the interface with respect to each other. So that's the one combination, okay? So then, uh, let me see. The question that you should ask yourself then, all right, what if, uh, okay, but what's the excitatory case? Okay, the excitatory case is very similar. So it's the same setup, blue cells, uh, uh, blue cell is placed closer to the knee point. So it's gonna generate spike first, right? And as soon as you generate the spike first, okay, then the corresponding uh, null plan for the perturbed red, red cell is shifted rightwards, which means it brings the spike initiation in the red cell closer. Okay, so therefore the red cell will take off much, much earlier than it's supposed to do in an in a unperturbed case. As a result, you're going to get uh, in phase synchronization, right? Uh, in, in, in this particular case, because again, because of that of that shift. Okay, so let me see if I have the illustration for that. Let me see inhibition, 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 three -er, three -er escape. Okay, so let me see if I run this again. What can I do to illustrate this? Okay, let's try to illustrate this and the way it's done. Okay. So we're going to change this file. So I need to change the, uh, first of all, I need to change the, the, okay, the level. So I'm going to make it, I said negative two, negative point one is, should be enough over here. Okay. And then I ran it, but you don't see anything at all because initial conditions are picked so that the cell almost uh, almost together, that's initial conditions. So what we're going to do, so this is the first initial condition over here. So they start right there. I need to change initial conditions for the second cell, and I'm going to make this negative 0.1. So the, 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 green, the green cell will start over here. Let's see if I'm right. But if I run it, uh, yeah, if I run it, Okay, so let's integrate shorter. So let's say three times shorter, it should be 8,000, okay. Eight. And then do it again. Okay, as you can see, uh, they start almost in the entire phase, not truly, okay, but okay, let me see, initial condition zero, and 1.1, 1.1 is here, Oh, I see it. I, I don't see initial conditions for the green cell because it's on the left here. Okay, uh, let's just say that the initial conditions for the red cell, I mean, don't be greedy, don't make it. 
Let's make it zero too, right? So we can see, yeah. Now the blue cell starts here, the green cell starts over there. You see they're in entire phase, okay? And then they keep moving in entire phase and then they start diverge from each other. So you can see what happens with the, uh, uh, what happens with the phase lag. It stays almost one half, right? And then it start raising up. And what we can do to show what happens, okay, one option is just let's make the interaction stronger see whether we're going to get the, the desired results okay here we are okay they run an entire phase okay they belong to the, stay on that plateau and then they start transitioning okay slowly towards the in 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 phase okay so let's do this let's keep this file and say save it as and we call this Let's call this pair of physical arguments and let's say excitation. 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 Let's save that. Okay. Then we need to open up the old file and then change everything back to what used to be 6.1. Okay, so and then so you can run it for yourself. We need plus over here. We need plus over here. And what we did here, we said before it was 1.11. And looks like we are back to where we used to be. Okay. Yeah. The transition from the transition from uh, from in phase to entire phase. Let me just slightly increase this value make them asymmetric. I just want to see the the exponential convergence. Now I can see it. You see it bends back to the one half. I mean, which means they become an, an entire phase. So we can close this window and move on. So now we have two files for excitatory case and for inhibitory case. And you're welcome to play with this MATLAB course to see uh, to see more. But the, the reason I, I'm talking about two, two cells because, because uh, the overall goal at this point is to, to discuss the interaction of three cells, right? And should, this should be enough. Okay, so next case is what's called post inhibitory rebound. So we already discussed post inhibitory rebound. Okay, one more time, let me just uh, re reiterate this. So you have a cell that is quiescent cell, and that's very important, it's quiescent cell. And that cell gets a negative uh, pulse, right, or neg negative inhibitory pulse, which makes this configuration, the cubic nucleidal ELO, shift over here. And the equilibrium state I also slides around this area, okay, you just can imagine that the cubic nucleidal shifts over here. And after the pulse is quickly removed, then the cell transition back to the steady state, okay. And, and after that, it become quiescent again. The, the trick is that when the cell gets, okay, now I go back to the slide. Now, where is it? Uh, release, yeah, positive heat rebound. So, okay, so you have to quiescent cells, okay? And then say you pick a red cell and apply a negative pass to it, okay? It's like you're gonna ignite your engine of your car Okay, and once you've done that, uh, it creates uh, a spike. That spike, because of inhibition, inhibit the blue cell, right? Red cell completes the spike, goes down, and as soon as it goes down and release the blue cell from inhibition, then the blue cell will fire, generate an action potential to inhibit the red cell. And now you have this, you know, sequential dynamics. You have this game, right? They inhibit each other, in, in alternation. So that's what basically uh, what they do. And this is an example of what's called emergent dynamics. So in isolation, none of the cell is oscillatory. Okay, none of the cell. But then you create this configuration. This configuration doesn't give you anything at all unless you inhibit, uh, one of the cell gets inhibition or, for example, if red cell Initial condition for the red cell is picked 
on a upper branch, which means it immediately inhibit the blue cell, right? So, so yeah, you want to make sure that one of the cell starts on a lower branch, where the other cell starts on the upper branch, and then you get oscillation in the system, and that's emergent dynamics. And the difference between the previous case, okay, the previous case is that there is no exponential convergence. So basically, this rhythm, that's why it's called emergent dynamics, like the emergency. So, for example, from my window, I can see what's called Grady Hospital, which is a hospital in downtown. And uh, our, when, you, when you dial, I mean, in this here, you dial 911, if something goes wrong, right? Not uh, score a zero 03, right? Is it still 03? And it's called emergency, which means emergency means something, okay, emergent dynamics so that, that emerges almost instantaneously, very quickly. But that's the, the the root of the of the word emergent dynamics. It's not graded emergence. It's immediate emergence, right? Graded appearance. But emergency means that it it it's something happened, right? And all of a sudden you have a drastic change in the behavior. So two quiescent cell, you inhibit one, release it, and voila, they will produce this kind of dynamics. So I go to the Dropbox. And then I can see this file. It's called uh, uh, Post Inhibitor Rebound. Okay. The problem with MATLAB uh, for illustrations is that uh, I can't show uh, the picture in development, right? Either I just uh, run the simulations and show you the, the, the result, I can't show you the evolution of of the network dynamics. So I click, but again, what's important compared to the previous case, you can see how strong the values are. Okay, so they're very strong because you need to make sure that the equilibrium state is shifted all the way to the left. So when you release the cell, you don't move back slowly to the old state. You have to move up almost vertically. So that's why you want to make sure that your epsilon is small Right, and then coupling is relatively strong. So if I click run and run the simulations, what I will see. Okay, so we'll try to interpret. So let me just say that both cells, okay, start around here. Okay, no, around that the equilibrium state. And then when you apply a pulse, you shift the cubic line of this one. Okay, that's that's it's how it's shifted over there. So it, it keep moving like this. And the equilibrium state moves at this position, which is on the left from the knee point, which, which warrants or guarantees that when the cell is released from inhibition, it's going to move straight up. So you see the green cell, it almost bends. It's very close to the knee point, but still far away from the equilibrium state, which means it still can transition uh, all the way up to the, uh, to the uh, upper branch of the cubic nuclei. If, if it happens to be over here, that very likely, not very likely, it will move back to the steady state, which basically means that we are on the edge of the uh, of, of of the of the on the edge of the of the bifurcation for the neural network. Okay, and then all, almost in, instantaneously, you have this anti-phase dynamics. Okay, so let me do this. I'm going to make this 1.5, 1.5. Okay. And very likely, okay, let me see, I don't say anything. Run it. <clears throat> you run it, okay, and you can see the green cell starts, uh, it, it's picked initially on the upper branch, low, a blue cell on the lower branch, and then it generates just one spike, and after that, you see, they go to the steady state. Again, the reason is because uh, the, 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 the green cell get trapped back to the steady state. So, which means inhibition is not strong enough. So, if I make it stronger, then steadily I should get the desired outcome from, from this network, right? Okay, you see it's far away from this knee point, which means it's not going to get trapped back to the steady state. So, and this is, again, as I said, emergent dynamics, but the coupling should be relatively strong, okay? But on the other hand, think of this, right? If you go to swimming pool and want to transition from, say, a breaststroke, which is in, in Russian means brass, to the crawl. I, I don't know what crawl. It's interesting. Uh, the 
the the the roots of crawl means crawling, which means uh, crawling. I, I forgot what crawling means in Russia. Uh, Pasti crawling, but here it's called the the freestyle. When when you move your arms in the, in an interface, but if you want to change the swimming style, you want to make sure that you don't. It doesn't take like ten seconds. It doesn't take ten cycles before you transition from in phase, uh, swimming phase, right? Swimming to anti phase swimming. So you want to make sure that it's almost instantaneous, right? All you have to do, you have to delay one of the arm to make sure that they become an anti phase afterwards. Okay, so that's an example of the post inhibitor rebound. And the, the, the interesting th story about post inhibitor rebound, that's what I told you about two cells, okay, is, uh, is the causality principle. Causality means that, okay, blue must inhibit the red, and then red inhibits blue to generate these pulses, or inhibition strong enough to produce this rhythmic outcome. I'll just illustrate uh, if you use, again, this post inhibitor rebound, you can, you do know a priori what the neural network outcome can be, provided, of course, that you set the system, the neural, neural neurons right, right, and your coupling is relatively strong, right? It's going to give you what, first example, sequential dynamics. So let's consider just uh, this ring of four cells, and they're all coupled one way, okay? So guess what? If they're all coupled one way, okay, then uh, say uh, the initial conditions for four identical cells are such that the blue cell is going to be uh, on the on state, right, on the upper branch, okay? Then blue cell inhibit the green, okay, then green fires, then green inhibits red cell, it fires, so if red cell doesn't have to be identical to to uh, to the uh, other cells of the network. Right? It can be uh, it can be uh, it can fire longer, generate more spikes, or just stay on upper branch longer, and then it's going to inhibit uh, green, and then the 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 circle closes, right? And then inhibition uh, gets back to the red cell to continue a new cycle, right? You're going to get something like that, right? But guess what? Uh, what if I Add up all connections in a in a in a in a all reciprocal connections. So what I'm going to get? Okay, let's try to to think. Blue then is going to inhibit these two, right? They're going to fire together, right? Guess what? One more time. So imagine that you have uh, reciprocal connections between the cells. So blue spikes, right? And then inhibit a brown and a green cell. So they're going to spike together. And if you have reciprocal connection, then after that, uh, blue cell will fire. But also, if there are reciprocal connection projected onto the red cell, then red cell is going to fire. Okay. And then, pairwise, brown and green cells will fire, and then these will fire. Right. So it's going to be kind of uh, two groups of anti-phase fighting cells, right? Blue and red versus the green and the and the brown cells. So it's going to be give it some sequential dynamics. So you can so you can you can basically imagine what the rhythmic outcome is going to be. Let's consider another example of of, of such a network. So you have just three cell three network uh, three cell network, something like that. That's what we call a motive. This is three cell motive, this is three cell motive, this is three cell motive, and this is a complete three cell motive. Okay, same story. Blue is going to start first. Right, and then it's going to inhibit, uh, and then it's going to inhibit green and red all together, so they fire, and then what's next? Because of this uh, reciprocal connection back onto the blue cell, then blue cell is going to fire, and then the cycle repeats. Okay, if I remove this connection, then uh, after that, right, blue will not get response from from the other two cells. And the network goes back to the quiescent state. It just generate one episode of activity. So you need to create some kind of feedback loop, right? So if you do the graph theory, you can really imagine uh, what the connectivity matrix should look like in this particular case, right? You need the feedback loops, okay? So, but if I consider this kind of network, okay, then what's the, what's the deal? Blue is going to fire, right? And then it's going to get a double. 
uh, feedback from red and green, but if it's reasonable, right, or they say uh, uh, the, the, this feedback is half of what used to be here, then blue is going to fire without any problem, right? And then you're going to get the same network, the same outcome. Clearly, if if I remove the feedback from the green cell and just leave that one, I will get the same feedback, right? Same story, right? If the interaction, so if you have a, a motif like that, and I didn't say anything about the coupling strength between the cells, and let's just say that that coupling strength, even if it's strong enough, and I, I tried to illustrate before, if I use it, uh, just make sure that these cells, when they all fire together, they don't compete, right? They don't uh, harm each other strongly. Then you're going to get the same rhythmic outcome, which means, hmm, right? One, two, three, four, four configurations of the neural network based upon the posting heap three bound will give you this, will give you, produce the same rhythmic outcome. And, and that's kind of predictable, right? Which is kind of interesting from um, mathematical perspectives. So, I mean, you don't have to consider some kind of primitive motive like that. You can construct your own network, right? And you can uh, construct uh, the network that of particular interest in, in biology, and then using this post inhibitory rebound, uh, I mean, produce different patterns of activity. However, as, as, what I've just said, it's only applicable to, to the neural network where the mechanism is well known. And if it's a post inhibitory rebound, then you, again, theoretically or uh, theoretically may predict rhythmic outcomes because you know the properties of the neural network of individual cells. OK, based upon if you if you if each cell is a is a oscillator, it's not quite clear what the outcome is going to be. Right. So you have to do some kind of research. OK, and and OK, so let's consider another interesting case that it has a code and it, it has a name. It's called release release case. So again, you have two configurations. They're all inhibitory. OK, and the idea is that this time each cell is oscillator. So you see in intact, in an intact case, uh, you, you have a limit cycle like this, right? And all you do, you couple them and you make the interaction kind of stronger. Okay, which means in this particular case that red, instead of you know completing the cycle and taking off from that new point because of that inhibition, will be moved all the way to the left Okay, shifted to the left, it's, it's cubic no line, where the intersection point occurs on the low point, below the left knee point, which means the red cell will be locked down by inhibition projected from the blue cell until the blue cell completes the spike, right? And after that, the red cell will be released from inhibition, right? And it goes back to normal to try to generate its, its uh, cycle right on in a symmetric manner is going to lock down the blue cell at the steady state okay and release it so therefore you're going to get also instantaneous emergent uh, rhythmic outcome almost immediately so it's not going to take several iterations before you you, you come to the interface this interface dynamics will pop up almost immediately and the last last case OK, the third case is called escape. So it's very similar setup. The only difference is that, OK, like post inhibitory rebound, both cells supposed to have in isolation an equilibrium state on the upper branch right here. OK, so blue is waiting here, right? And if I pick initial condition for the red cell, also close to the steady state, well, all you will see just a, you know, two quiescent state, depolarized state and nothing else. But what I'm going to do, right, I'm going to pick initial condition for the blue cell up here and for the red cell in a in a in a in a uh, off position so that it transition. OK, so blue cell waiting here, red wants to get to that same equilibrium state. OK, and it move, 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 right? Blue again inhibit the red cell, but again, it never reached the equilibrium state over there. Right, so that's again, it, that's a that's what you, you, you want to make sure that it's true, okay? And as soon as red cell takes off, 
it, it inhibit the blue cell, but inhibition basically means it's going to shift the cubic uh, to the left, so which means this blue no longer have that plateau, it's going to fall off down to start the game again, right? And then you have what's called uh, emergent dynamics you, uh, through the escape mechanism. But again, prerequisite for, for this kind of uh, mechanism is that both cells should be in the upper position, inhibition should be relatively strong, but it should be strong enough so that inhibition doesn't lock down the, the driven cell at the hyperpolarized state. So if I, okay, so let me see if I have it, I have this escape mechanism file and I run it. So again, you, you don't see uh, uh, the transition, but basically uh, both cells sitting right here, right, at, the, at this equilibrium state, let me make it, they, they sit right here, and then one of the cells, so green sitting here, cell, the blue transition, then it takes off, land on the upper branch, and then you see that shifts the corresponding loop line for the green cell to the left, so green cell falls down uh, on, the, on, the, on the lower branch. Meanwhile, the blue cell transitions towards the Caribbean uh, state, okay, and then uh, the, the green cell transition towards the knee point takes off, right? And now you have this game, and it, you can see they, uh, it results in a more or less anti phase bursting. Again, this is another example of, of, uh, of emergent network dynamics. But here is the very important part that I didn't say that, but I should have said it from the start. Okay, and that's very interesting that, oops, what I've done. Just a second, let me figure out what I did. PowerPoint. Okay, so first of all, don't do the full screen. Sorry, guys. Something went wrong. Okay, no, back to normal. Okay, what I didn't say, and that I should have said that, in biological systems, it's almost true that the rhythmic outcomes that you can see they don't correspond to any particular attractors. These are all transient. Uh, it's a transient dynamics, right? What's called chain recurrent transient dynamics. So they don't converge to any particular attractors, but they're trying to get, get back to the steady state they believe <laughs> they belong to, right? Okay, so, so we, we just discussed three mechanisms of, of uh, network dynamics, release, escape, post heap three rebound. And we also discussed how the network uh, managed to have particular phase legs between the cells, depending whether it's inhibition or excitation and how it can be done uh, exponentially, exponentially, in an exponential manner, which is great from, from our perspective, mathematical perspective, but unfortunately, right, it's it's more of uh, visual thinking. Biological systems don't do that typically. Okay, so let me grab my grub. I forgot about my team. And let's talk about two other um, ne next topic. Okay. Um, it, it, it reveals basically the role of the cell node bifurcations in neuroscience, another toy model, okay? And this is just, a, we're going to start off with the bifurcation that, I don't know whether you heard of it or not, right? That abbreviated as SNIC, S-N-I-C. S-N-I-C stands for saddle node on invariant circle, right? And, and you may wonder what that's supposed to mean. And what it's supposed to mean that, okay, you, you start off by considering a simple first order differential equation, just single, theta prime or phi prime, is it phi? Phi prime equals one, that define a modulo two pi. The reason, okay, that it's not x or y, it's a, it's a Greek letter uh, phi is often used to describe what's called angular variable. So, so imagine, that this is a unit circle, okay, and phi measures the angle from this, from the origin, okay. So, so that's a, that's your 
Union Circle. Okay, origin is here. I mean, we can always pick it anywhere we want, but for, for my purposes, I'm going to pick the origin here. Okay, and then this angle means pi over 2, this is pi 3, pi over 2, and 2 pi again. So that's why it says on module 2 pi. Okay, and basically, uh, phi prime equals 1, which means, okay, I mean, you can solve this, it's just, it means that the, the phase, okay, now instead of saying angular variable, I'm going to call this the phase on the unit circle, right? You move like this, right? There's a constant speed. You move like this, there's a constant speed, okay? And then you complicate things, right? Okay, first of all, you you subtract, you create your sneak, you need bifurcation, and what you do is you subtract uh, cosine phi from one, okay? And you do know that at when angle is zero, right here, right, cosine of zero is one, which means here I have one minus one, which means I have an equilibrium state right at this point. If I start slightly on the right from this equilibrium state, okay, then where uh, this expression angle cosine is less than one, then, okay, you're going to move like this, right, again, and come back to the steady state. Okay, and to show that it's a cellular bifurcation, you just expand cosine in the Taylor series near the origin, right? And then you're going to get this term, which is basically a quadratic term, and you do know that it's a, just a, uh, a quadratic term, which is a normal form for the cellular bifurcation. And then you need the perturbation. And perturbation is simple. You add up a constant small parameter mu in the right-hand side of this equation, and it's going to give you the, the normal form for the cell node bifurcation, okay? And basically, geometrically, what that mu is supposed to do, when mu equals zero, you have a cell node equilibrium state at, at the origin right here. Again, it's a matter of convenience where you place the origin. And then when mu is negative, which means mu is negative, then you have two fixed point or equilibrium state, okay? So no surprise that this one is gonna be a repeller, okay, this one is an attractor, and you're going to transition from, if you happens to be slightly above the repeller, then you're going to move like this, right? And then you converge to the steady state. But when you make mu negative, uh, positive, this expression is going to be, uh, uh, this expression is going to be positive, right? Then you're going to lose the equilibrium states, and then you transition from this, what is known as a ghost, or <clears throat> phantom of the saddle node, Right, and you slowly transition from this. Uh, this what is shown here. Right? Slowly transition from the ghost of the cell node. Then you accelerate, and then you speed up, uh, and then you come back to the origin. Okay. Now you see I introduce this Cartesian coordinates. So to make sure that I'm in the unit circle, that's my origin, and I basically follow the uh, the ordinate uh, coordinate of the of the of the ball or position phase point on the circle, right? This is negative cosine theta, okay? In this case, theta of phi. So, and now I'm going to treat this, this expression as a spike. So, as speaking of the, of the phase, then clearly it's going to transition from zero to two pi, and then you reset it and then transition from zero to two pi. So, instead of using phi, I'm going to use negative cosine phi as a, as an ordinate of, of the position of the phase space on a circle. And what would what we all see that, okay, if I happen, if I have two equilibrium states, right, right, right now, and then I apply a positive pulse, okay, now I'm speaking neuroscience, so basically I make new positive, right, for a, for a while, then I'm gonna complete a number of circles, and then I remove the perturbation of that pulse, I make mu zero, for example, right? Then I go back to the steady state. So meanwhile, I produce a number of spikes, okay? But if I make mu is positive, therefore, what's going to happen is that I'm gonna get spike, slow transition through zero, right? And then spike again. Okay, so that's how the uh, that negative cosine, the argument, oh no, the, the abscess on our union circle is gonna look like in time. This uh, uh, is it? Yeah, that, that pink pink line. You see, a spike, slow transition due to the ghost of the cell node. Spike again. Okay, and then uh, 
for 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 certain modeling purposes we introduce uh, and I, I uh, emailed you the link to the paper in the last time uh, to another minimalistic models we call this two theta buster in contrast to single uh, <coughs> single theta and the driver of of this model and, and the reason we did it because we wanted to kind of bring our modeling studies closer to uh, coupled endogenous bursters. Okay, so burster, maybe I'll just show it to you. This slide, I'm going to come back to, to it later on. So what you see, uh, this is just a picture showing a bursting activity. So you have a tonic spike in activity to generate spikes and then quiescent phase and then slow down over here to generate number of spikes, and then again slow transition through the quiescent space. So which means, okay, your trace in time is going to look something like this, right? You have a quiescent phase, and then spikes on that plateau, and then quiescent phase again. So we we uh, removed all the spikes. We call this spikeless burster. So which means it has two slow transitions, quiescent transition, and then slow spiking transition. And the, the idea was very similar, sim, uh, simple. We need to slow down here and let's slow down at the upper top point around pi. So, and that's why you have this cosine two theta instead. So, which means whenever angle is zero, you have a cell node. And whenever angle is pi, then again, you have a two pi, you have a cell node again over here. So, you slow down here slowing down there. The meaning of this term right, is this a cosine, a is small, is basically is to control independently uh, this gap between the, uh, the control this uh, bottleneck effect at the bottom position or at the top position. Okay, so you can increase this gap or decrease this gap and this can be done using this term. Okay, which means you're going to either extend that plateau over here by narrowing this gap or by narrowing that gap, you're going to extend the quiescent phase, right? And what's shown here, I'm, I'm going to hopefully get back to this topic at the very last lecture, right? We considered uh, the interaction of three cell motifs like this, right? Where each cell is, is a spikeless burst or something like that, okay? And then they reciprocally inhibit each other. So an inhibition is modeled by these two terms. It's very similar to what we discussed before. The whole, the same concept of, of FTM, which means this, in, this in, inhibitory term, it, it, it vanishes, it's almost zero below synaptic threshold, which is just in the middle of the, of the circle. So it's here, zero here, and then it's one above the synaptic threshold during the active phase of the of the cells, OK? And again, in contrast to uh, theta or theta spike in cells, right, that give you something like that, now by by playing, by varying this term epsilon, again, uh, also epsilon doesn't really matter, it's a it's, it's small number epsilon, then we can change, we can change what's called the duty cycle of bursting. Duty cycle is, is uh, basically you need to find the period. In, in this case, period is almost the same in all in all cells, right? And the cycle is a fraction of of an active phase compared to the period. So, for example, right now, okay, this is the period, and this active phase, the duty cycle is roughly one half of the of the period, which means duty cycle is fifty percent. Duty cycle is, is Merely an engineering term, okay. It tells you, I mean, how active whatever uh, the uh, device is, okay. So, if, for example, a theta neuron has a very, very uh, narrow, small duty cycle, okay. I don't want to talk like engineer, but I can say whatever, ten percent, five percent, okay. Whereas the burster, all bursters, right? They always have duty cycle at least close to fifty percent, and we're going to talk about this later on because that's very important for, for neural network made of biologically plausible cells. 
Okay, so that was the story of the saddle load, and we need this for our future considerations, future examinations, right? Now, speaking of uh, saddle load, uh, Alexa told me that you're supposed to know you're supposed to know that, but just in case, I still I would like to uh, say uh, what saddle load is. So this is normal form. So saddle load bifurcation by 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 the its origination. It's a you have a single differential equation, right? Of, of first order, you have a mu plus x squared plus extra dots, right? And it's going to give you uh, two points when mu is negative, stable, and unstable, right? Then they merge together, forming it's called double, double equilibrium state. And when mu becomes positive, then it disappears. And this is called the ghost of the saddle node, which means it's going to take some time to get through this ghost of the saddle node. So if I want to consider the saddle node in R2, I can add another equation that is, as you can see, it's fully decoupled from this from the x equation, and uh, because of that minus, it makes in R two. Okay, now th this is truly saddle load because this equilibrium state is going to become a saddle, so it has stable direction and stable direction, and this is a node it has four or two uh, stable directions. Okay, and after that you truly have a saddle node in R2. So that's an old result that can be also, I mean, again, it's due to Andronov and Veed, which means it was known by, by what, what, 1935 at least, right? Even, even earlier, it's known for many years. And what I didn't tell you, by the way, yesterday, when I talked about the theory of oscillations books, I forgot to mention that the theory of oscillations book was published uh, when all three authors, can you imagine, were only 35, 36 years old, right? They, okay, and then they were creators of the brand new theory of the oscillation theory, okay? Now it's 11, it's 11.18, okay, let's make a break because I'm losing some kind of uh, engine and then we're gonna come back to the, uh, in 10 minutes we're gonna come back to, to, to our discussion, okay? Oh, where is my file? It's right here.